But he, I put up a preview of a track, of, of a sort of small track that I was like, oh, this is cool, when people used to put previews up, I don't know. And um, San Holo commented on it, it was like, I can't remember what he said. Like cool. He's like, yo, this is sick or something. Yeah. And then I clicked on his profile, I saw this guy, I was like, oh my god, he's got 2,000 followers. <laughs> like, Whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. It's seven times me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In like uh, San's hometown called Zutamir. And uh, it was like the first ever, I think it was from the first compilation. They did a little uh, get gathering of like 50 people. And uh, yeah, I flew over there and they did the live stream. My mum saw me on the live stream. She's like, wow, he's there. <laughs> he's on the I live stream. Son, and it was like, yeah, it was quite surreal. Mm -hmm. It was quite crazy. But yeah, then I sent that to uh, Graves and he was like, oh, I love the idea. And then he just completely fleshed it out. Changed up the drop a little bit, added like much his, his normal like Graves drums. And yeah. Then he found another vocalist called Johnny Payne, I think. And uh, yeah. Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk today. I'm here with Discus. Yo, how are you? <laughs> so you're originally from the UK? Uh, uh, yeah, from uh, a small county called, well not small, called Surrey, mm -hmm. which is like uh, just sort of southeast of London um, in a little town called uh, Farnham. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And your parents are originally from there as well? or? Yeah, yeah, my parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Uh, my dad's an engineer. My mum's a nurse. Oh. So like something completely like yeah. relevant to music, but yeah. Is your mom the more creative one though? She like had you experiment with a lot of activities growing up. Is my mum more creative? Yeah. Say? Um Yeah, I think my mum's I'm not really sure. Like they're both quite creative. It's quite hard. <laughs> yeah. What kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? Uh a lot of stuff like, I don't know, like Dido and like old old records that like, I, I don't know, they weren't really massively into music. It was just more one of those things that in school my mum got me into guitar lessons and it was like, that's how I got into it, even though they're not musical. Too. Yeah. Was that something you requested for or did she kind of be uh, like, she, pick she an was just like, yeah, pick an instrument. I started up like, as a little kid, as like, uh, played like a little uh, recorder and uh, but then uh, when I was like eight years old, she was like, do guitar lessons because all the other kids were doing guitar lessons or some instrument. So I did that guitar lessons at school and then realized that the teachers at school weren't that great. So she like moved me on to like someone more private. Mm -hmm. how, how often were you doing these lessons? Uh, like once a week, every Thursday for like half an hour. So not too much. Yeah. Uh, and back then were you listening to uh, Andy, Andy McKee or? Andy McKee? Yeah. Yeah, I love Andy McKee, like Sanger Jung, Andy McKee, a lot of acoustic guitar. But like when I started guitar, like my, uh, my sort of uh, parents, or like they, they chose me to sort of do classical guitar. So oh, like, okay. We had like a grading system in England where you have like what grade one to eight. Yeah. And I did like classical grades. Oh, so like, you had to take the exams? Yeah, to do exams. Yeah. Oh, you! Well, that's really serious. I feel like that's so uncommon, like in the UK or America. To I know in Asia, it's so common for kids to do like the exams to pass the grade. Oh, do you have like instrument exams? Yeah, yeah like yeah. I did p tons of piano exams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's weird. You sort of go to some little church or somewhere, like some strange yeah. building. It's always something strange. And, and it's then like you random. sort of sit there and it's yeah. some what, ra one person in like some reverby hall. <laughs> Like, right, you've got to sing some notes or you've got to play some, yeah. you've got to play three songs and then there's a lot of theory and stuff that go behind it as well. But what made your mom or you want to take those exams? I feel like it's kind of uncommon. Most I parents are like, in, just, in, in England especially for guitar. Or in England it's, it's quite common, yeah. Okay, maybe that's the same because Hong Kong used to be British, but okay. So do you like doing those exams and like uh, practicing yeah, a lot? I did, but then it got to the point where I was like, I don't really enjoy playing this sort of stuff. Because I was, it, was, it was almost like forced upon me, not like, I wasn't forced, forced, but it was like, that's what, I just wanted to do something different, so I got into like acoustic guitar and like uh, Andy McKee, like you said, and a lot more melodic uh, 
just playing what I want, uh, using tab rather than looking at music because yeah. for school. Um, Were you in some bands back then then? Uh, only in school bands, like I was in a folk band, Oh wow. in a jazz band. Do you like that? Folk and jazz? Yeah. yeah, jazz band was harder, folk band was quite relaxed, I enjoyed that more. Um, Did it ever occur to you to make a group with your friends? Or were they not into music? Yeah, a lot of my friends weren't really into music, to be honest. I didn't really know any others, apart from my, my uh, parents, family friends, who had their kids doing music. A lot of my friends were into gaming, and for me, I was like between playing games and then making music. Mm -hmm. time. Uh, How else would you describe your personality back then growing up? Um, quite an anxious kid, quite a shy kid that uh, sort of hang out of everyone in school rather mm -hmm. than just select people, just sort of floated about whoever. Yeah. Um, did, did you like school? Yeah, I liked school. It was, uh, I mean, it was a good time of my life. It yeah. Wasn't like, did you do well? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> just because, like, I don't know, I wasn't, I was one of those kids that didn't really focus in class at all. Mm -hmm. Sort of just, unless, I don't know, unless it was like something that I enjoyed, I'd just probably fail at it, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. um, but after school I went to college, I didn't do too bad at college. Where did you study? Uh, Alton College, but this is, I think college in America is different. It's uni, right? I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I went to uni after that, which is, is uh, Westminster in London. Oh, which okay. Which I did do well at because it was music and I could use my Duskus stuff as, as work to put forward. Mm -hmm. So I did So wait, well. what were you studying before music? Well, in college? Yeah. Uh, what was I studying? Wait, did you have a specified field? Or is it general education? It was, uh, I did a uh, music tech. Oh, okay. So it was uh, just like music technology, studio, production, mixing, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you already realized like right after high school that you wanted to make music your career somewhere or another? Uh, yeah, I think, I'm not really sure. Like, I kind of just did music because I enjoyed it, not because I wanted to, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do as a career. Like, my dad was like, oh, you could be an engineer and you could get into engineering. But I was like, I did that for a little couple, like a few months or a month or two and also did a bit of welding. And oh, just, like with him? Yeah, yeah, so I worked with my dad as an engineer. I just trained and um, yeah, I, it was, it was alright. I, kind of, <laughs> I kind of got bored quite quick. Um, so now I was like, oh, I just want to do something I enjoy. So I just tried to figure out, I just did music all the time and didn't really think about making money I just ended up making a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Were your parents worried of you doing music? Because they did, did they know people around them that were able to have uh, No they like, just thought it was kind of it? weird at first. Now they're like fully supportive of it but like at first they were like oh he's just got his like internet friends. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And yeah. They just thought I was just like they're like well you're gonna have to get a real job one day or mm -hmm. but then I think eventually as I saw I've like came to America and started playing shows and stuff, they really like understand it now because they follow like San Holo and all the... Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but back then when you were doing music technology, do you think, did you already know from the onset you want to be an artist or you, with that you could have been someone who's... I think that yeah, it was on my mind, process. I was like, oh I love making music and I love being, like portraying an image or an art, as an artist. But um, yeah, I was sort of, I wasn't too sure, but I was like quite confident that I was going to do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, I know a lot of people who do music like don't want to study it, but what, like looking back, do you think it really helps you or do you think it kind of just made you, the, like the training too formal, that it's hard to be creative? Um, what, like study music? Which is yeah, because a lot of like artists I listen to, they're like, oh, I would never study music because the training's too formal and it would make me like, take the love uh, out of music? I, th I don't think it would take the love out of music. I think the problem is is when you go to study music, it might it's so, it, it has to be so broad because there's so many different lanes of music. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, in uni we had to do, like, if I wanted to do that, to like be in the sort of electronic scene, but no one else in my class was doing that. They were doing rock or something different. So they had to make it for everyone, so it was so broad 
that you wouldn't actually learn mm -hmm. specifics for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think you could you recommend people going to study music in school? Uh, I recommend it because you just get to meet other musicians and you mm. get and you might just I don't know. For me, I use I use it as a way to not get a job for three years <laughs> and just be around other music yeah. people and just to just to be able to make music. Even sit at the back of the classroom, just making music with headphones on. Mm -hmm. like... How did you get from doing the guitar to electronic music? Uh, that was a weird one. It was sort of like I don't know, like in year ten, which is like when you're like I'm not really sure what age, fifteen, fourteen. Year ten is in the sort of early. I heard like electronic oh, it's music like, being yeah, thrown 14. around and dubstep being thrown around, and I was like. Oh, I really want to do that. I really want to like figure out how I can make music on a laptop. And I just watched this one like YouTube video that just step by step with some guy drawing in notes and I was just copying each <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is amazing. But also I think in uh, my school before that we there was a program called Dance EJ, which is like a, a really you can just drag in loops. It's really easy loops and they're all in key and everything works. And, it, and you could just make songs from it. And like, I remember doing that and it was like so fun. It was like, I had so much fun doing that. And you get to show it in assembly like every Thursday or something like that. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, this is amazing. And I remember doing that and I was like, then a few years later, obviously, when the dubstep thing, I was like, I want to do it again. Like, got FL Studio. And yeah, mm -hmm. I started making melodic, yeah. melodic music. Did you have a name before Duskus? Uh, yeah, not really, sort of. It's like. <laughs> it's, it's out there, it's but it's not out name, there. It's kind of a bad name, so I don't really want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> and then how did you come up with your name? Uh, Duskus was. Yeah. When I first started it, in the first like three months of it being existing, it was like me and my friends, it was sort of Dusk Us. Like, uh, and then, yeah, he was just sort of a DJ and I produced. But then it was like. We sort of just. He's sort of. We sort of separated, we didn't speak as much, and then mm -hmm. I just ended up just taking the project. Oh, so it was originally a duo? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for like a month. <laughs> for like not very long. Yeah. Like, yeah. How big were you until like San Hollow found you, or like where was your uh, following your career at that point? I think I had like 300 followers on SoundCloud, oh and I was gosh. getting like 10 comments on a track, and I was like, yes, 10. Ten comments, <laughs> and they weren't your friends too, so that's what's cool. Yeah, or yeah. maybe they—I don't know. <laughs> yes, maybe some of them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, were you already like a huge fan of him at that point? Of uh, Sam. Yeah. Uh, or you didn't really know his stuff. He had like two thousand followers at that point. Oh no way. So. Wait, how many years ago was this? Like five years ago, four years ago. Okay. So he hit me up. But he, I put up a preview of a track, of, of a what? sort of small track that I was like. Oh, this is cool, when people used to put previews up, I don't know. And um, San Holo commented on it, it was like, I don't know what he said. Like cool? He's like, yo, this is sick or something. Yeah. And then I clicked on his profile, I saw this guy, I was like, oh my god, he's got 2,000 followers. <laughs> I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. Seven times me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I saw like in his bio it said like, at Bitbird. I clicked on that and it had like 50 followers or something. But I like... <laughs> Even though I like trying to send stuff on these other platforms, I like just love the like the look of Bitbird and the branding. And San Holo did have a couple of little ideas up on there as well. So I was like, oh, I really love the way this looks. Mm -hmm. So I sent that that preview track, the full thing, to uh, Bitbird, and then they just replied instantly saying, well, "Yeah, we'll we'll do it as the first ever Bitbird release, pretty much." Oh, wow. And then yeah. And then how long after until you were like signed? Well, I'm not like exclusively signed to Bitbird, I'm just, I sign the releases, but... Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But you're the first artist to release on there? I know yeah. you're the first artist to something on there. It's just the release, that song. I was the first, basically the first artist there, yeah. 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 And then at that point, were you still, wait, were you based in London by that point, or...? Yeah, I was still at home in Surrey. Um, Still just in my parents' house making music. Mm -hmm. uh, at college at the time, I think. And then when did you move to London? And then after the two years of college finished, I went to, I applied to University of Westminster. And, uh... Oh, so you've been there ever since? 
I finished now, I finished yeah. last year, so I was there for three years, mm -hmm. um, which is good. Yeah. Um, After college, did you have to work other jobs meanwhile? Like, oh yeah, I did a little bit of engineering with my dad and welding, but yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only jobs I've worked. Wow, that? so then like kind of soon after that you're already like living off music. Uh, so I went to university, you get a student loan. <laughs> yeah. So you get three years there. Um, so my parents supported me as well. Um, but now, after uni's finished, I feel, I feel like I finally can just do music. Mm -hmm. I mean? yeah. yeah. And then, how long after that did you do your song with Sun Hollow and Tor? It's like, uh, way after, right? Yeah, that was towards the end of the three years of uni, which is like, last year. Whoa, yeah. everything, okay, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, wh what was it like finally meeting him in person? Uh, or when was that, actually? I think that was even before I went to uni, because they did a uh, Bitbird showcase, like, three or four years ago in like uh, San's hometown called Zutamir and uh, it was like the first ever I think it was from the first compilation they did a little uh, get gathering of like 50 people and uh, yeah I flew over there and they did the live stream my mum saw me on the live stream she's like wow he's there <laughs> he's on the I live stream Sun, and it was like yeah it was quite surreal mm -hmm. it was quite crazy and then when did you do your session together or make your song together? Uh, which one? there's two Forever Free. Forever Free. Uh, that was like, I don't know, like a year ago, just before, a few months before the album, mm -hmm. his album. Um, I just basically wrote up a really basic idea of some vocal chops and I sent it to him. He's like, yo, I love it. Let's work on it together. And I was like, yeah, sick. And then he just basically finished it like really quick and I was like, Jesus, it's amazing. <laughs> and then, yeah. So it wasn't in person? It was just like No, online. we just did it online, yeah. yeah. Super easy. Like and a, when was the Bitbird writing camp, your first writing camp? Uh, when was that? I edited that video <laughs> I put up on this channel. I was like, oh wait, you're in this. I'm not even sure when it was, like a year? I don't yeah, know, I think it was yeah, more than I'm really a year bad ago. Days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but was your first, how was that? Like, was it your first writing camp, right? Or? Yeah, yeah, my first, yeah, it was really sick. It was just cool to hang out with some, like, some of what I believe are some of the best creators. Yeah. Like, ever. Mm -hmm. So like genius minds just chatting to them watching them make music and then making music with some of them as well it's just yeah it's crazy mm -hmm. it's really good. and then what was it like um touring with san <laughs> did you do many shows before that not in the u.s that was yeah. the, the that, that tour was the first ever u.s shows i ever did because i just got the visa and i was like fly over to the u.s did salt lake city and that was a crazy tour like Quite relaxed. Everyone was really nice on the on the bus. Um, didn't get too much time to make music, but yeah, it was, it was just for me. It was just like a learning, a learning thing, seeing how crowds work. Because I've not played many shows. I'm not a great DJ, um, but just see how the crowd reacts to your set. It took like three or four shows to really adjust my set mm -hmm. to understand how it all works, you know. And you never have played with such big audiences before, right? Or in the UK, have you? Uh, no, no, that yeah, no, not that big. Was that in the UK? I played to like stressful. Yeah, I was super stressed. Well, actually, I don't know. I feel like we've done a couple in uh, Holland. Okay. Like ADE. Yeah. Which are like still much smaller. Oh, those are. But they, those are smaller. But you've got a lot. A lot of my friends were there, so it was like that was more nerve wracking because all my friends are watching. But like when it's in America, you're just playing to some like random kids you've never seen in your life so it's kind of just like yeah whatever and it's not as nervous I'm not, I don't get as nervous mm -hmm. for and how about your Julu tour that you're just like used to touring by that point yeah or? obviously the first show I got to get back into it but then it was like yeah easy mm -hmm. chilled <laughs> really fun I used to get like so nervous for like the shows at first but now it's just like when I'm not playing a show, I'm like, oh, I want to play a show, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so. Actually, for like new artists, what kind of advice would you give them for if they also have the anxiety before they go on a show? Uh, that's a difficult, that's a difficult one, to be honest. There's a lot of different, I mean, have one, have a beer, <laughs> put some sunglasses on. Sunglasses. Uh, yeah, I don't really know that I got, if I knew I would, I would have used it. <laughs> 
like, <laughs> just keep playing shows until you don't get nervous, mm -hmm. isn't it, basically? Yeah. So in a previous interview, I think, that you said that you took a small break from music. Uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of had like a block for a while. Um, of just sort of repeating myself, doing the same sort of musical process every time. So I took a break, only for like a month or two, mm -hmm. which is still quite a long time, but I just sort of relaxed, I just sort of reconnected myself to the music I liked, tried to find new music and stuff, re-inspire myself, and then changed up all my like processes of how I go to make music, so like, I mess around on keys or guitar now, and rather mm -hmm. than just doing it straight in the piano roll, I try out just new tools and in Ableton, new, new uh, plugins, etc. Yeah. Just to like make it more fresh myself, because I was repeating the same sort of thing every time. I was like, this is getting so stale. Mm -hmm. So no wonder I was getting like kind of bored of making music for a bit. But now I'm like super connected again. It's like I feel like right now is the best. Oh, that's I feel so like the good. Best. Yeah. And how did you meet Graves? Uh, I've never met him in person. He just hit me up on Twitter. And how was the process like for that? Well, uh, making the track with Graves? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just sort of sent him a bunch of ideas. I was like, if there's any of these you vibe with, let me know. And there's one called Easy, which like, I recorded my girlfriend's vocal. We just sliced like, I wish it was easy. Oh, is she a singer? Yeah, she sings. Oh. Um, she does music as well. Um, that's yeah, then I sent cool. that to uh, Graves and he was like, oh, I love the idea and then he just completely fleshed it out, changed up the drop a little bit, added like much his, his normal like Graves drums. And yeah. Then he found another vocalist called Johnny Payne, I think. And uh, yeah. That that's, it. yeah. I mean, that's so easy that if your girlfriend sings it, you could practice so much of like how it is to work in sessions. So I feel like yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. who first started producing, they don't know how to actually work a session. Like a lot of SoundCloud people, can't do that. Is that something that you kind of like learn with her of how a session works or like how to feed in vocals, work with vocals like in, on the spot? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just working with people in real life in general gives you that confidence to just be like, yo, change this, do this in the studio. This, mic, this mic's not working, change it out. Do you know what I mean? And a lot mm. of good producers now are just in their room, they don't meet anyone. And they're just making music on yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. the inspiration behind Tell Me Why? Uh, that was just sort of like me going into my new direction with the housey, housey direction, um, which is what I've really gotten into. Sort of like, yeah, I just sort of wrote the, the chorus and then just did some vocal chops, auto tuned them, cut them up. I was like, yo, this is pretty cool, I like this, I like this. And then mm -hmm. I got my girlfriend to sing on it. And uh, we sort of like the sort of PC music, auto tune the sort of vocals, so that's what I sort of like, like going for. Mm -hmm. um, so we sort of really, yeah, she recorded that, and then she just wrote something really cool for it, and I was like, yo, this is so sick. And then, yeah, that was it, really. How about the inspiration for the lyrics? Uh, well, so like my girlfriend wrote that, so it was like... Yeah. Um, was it something you were bouncing off? Or like, sharing what stuff that you wanted? Or was it just kind of like her, like, I want to write this and you just... Yeah, sort of, I, I, I did give her my feedback. I was like, yeah, I love the idea and I, I feel this as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? Uh, like the early songs I made were like more... They were still me, they were still fresh to me at that, at that point in time. It was like, I was making this sort of future bass thing when it wasn't made, called future bass. And it was like, uh, some people called it love trap, chill trap, whatever. Mm -hmm. To me at the time, that was like super fresh. It was like, yo, I love just making whatever. And then that sort of style got super oversaturated. That wasn't the reason I stopped making it. It's just because I sort of fell out of, I wanted to do something that felt fresh again to me. Yeah. So I, sort of just tried to figure out how I can just continue making what I like and keep it fresh to myself, changing up the BPMs, changing up the drums, uh, still keeping the cool Dusker sound of like the vocal chops because that's always been there, um, but just sort of changing up the sounds really and still keeping the melodic aspect of it, but just the sounds and how modern it sounds and 
what, what feels good to me. Mm -hmm. How would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? Uh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> the same person. Yeah, I feel like I'm a lot. I'm a lot. I'm still not really confident, but I'm a little bit more confident. Um, I've just turned into a more of an adult, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, <laughs> the same as everyone else. <laughs> What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life? Uh, I think like overcoming like a creative block, which is like, which happened like a few months ago. I was just in this huge block. And it made me feel super like depressed about it. Just like, I was like, ah, oh, I'm never going to write what I like again. I'm never... But then I just realized I was aiming to write something good rather than just forgetting about what I'm writing and just mm -hmm. really feel music for what it is and forget like when you get pressure from the music industry and like money starts coming in and people are watching you, you have to do things, you have deadlines. It's super like, it just killed my buzz oh, completely. Yeah. And I was like, but then I just realized like, just make what you want still. Just forget about everything else. Just continue doing music. You've got to separate it out. It's quite hard to do, but I think I, think I figured it out mm -hmm. now. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Uh, Uh, I don't know. Um, it's not. It's, it's not permanent. It's temporary. I don't mm -hmm. think it's ever permanent. Uh, I feel like. Yeah, that's yeah, just temporary. I don't really know what else to say. That's a difficult question again. Yeah. <laughs> well, the last one. What do you want to be remembered for? Uh. I don't really mind if I'm not remembered, to be honest. Um, maybe for my music or something. I don't know. I don't really care if I'm remembered, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's it, really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Bye.